Thank you, Mr. Chair. I have a uh, PowerPoint presentation this evening to introduce the 2020 operating budget, capital budget, and equipment budget to City Council and the community. I'd like to start off just talking a little bit about the, the budgeting framework that the City utilizes to, to prepare a budget. Um, we use a planning frame that our City Manager just spoke of. Uh, also encompasses planning sessions. We had a number of planning sessions with Council. Council provided very good direction in terms of the budget. Um, and we also have a number of matters as we go through the year where you have referrals or tabled matters, you table the budget. So we take that all into account, that all into account, um, and what we do is prepare a call for estimates for, for the budget, taking into account all of that, and then the departments utilize that framework to develop their business plans. City administration balances service levels, expectations, and affordability in doing that. Um, those sort of all weigh in doing that. Um, those sort of all weigh in together. Uh, obviously, if affordability wasn't an issue, it's very easy to solve a lot of your, your service uh, delivery problems. But we take all of those things into account to be able to produce a budget for you. External factors certainly play a major role in the budget. Uh, the provincial economy, very major impact on the city. Uh, a good example of that is our revenue sharing. We get three quarters of a percent of the provincial sales tax. So if the provincial economy is doing well, there's more money in, in revenue sharing for us. Uh, also, the local economy plays a very, very important role in our budget. Uh, as our economy grows and, and we have more economy grows and, and we have more economic activity, we generate more tax revenues, and we also uh, have more demands in terms of our services and those sorts of things. So it's a, it's a bit of a balancing act, but it certainly has a major impact on the budget. Financial factors, things like inflation, um, the increases to our various collective agreements, those all factor into our budget. Increases to our various collective agreements, those all factor into our budget as well. So all of those influence the budget. And at the end of the day, we have the budget that we are going to uh, present to you this evening. I'd like to start off with the 2020 general operating budget. Uh, this chart just gives you an overview of the revenues uh, in terms of that budget. And this chart just gives you an overview of the revenues uh, in terms of that budget. And you can see some of the major revenue areas. Municipal taxation is about 57% of our budget, so by far the largest revenue source. Uh, provincial grants and subsidies is about 21.3%. You add those together, that's almost 80% of our revenues there. And then we have a lot in the chart. Uh, municipal tax levy, I just wanted to speak a little bit about that one since it does play such a large role in our overall revenues. Um, and as you can see, we've had steady, steady increase in our overall municipal tax levy uh, over, over this period of this graph. Um, that is a good thing. Um, you have to expect that your tax revenues are going to grow to be able to pay for the cost of living increases, the salary increases that are into the budget, and we've had that process uh, as we've moved along. Um, certainly different than, than previous uh, eras uh, with the city. We did, as an example, in the 90s, we had a, a very long period of time where we, as an example, in the 90s, we had a, a very long period of time where we really didn't have a lot of increase in the municipal tax levy, and that results in, in over time, really reductions in your overall levels of service. So the fact that our municipal tax levy is going up is, is, is a good thing overall. Uh, city continues, unfortunately, though, to 2019. Uh, you can see, again, it's, it's a, a fairly significant loss of commercial taxes, about $400,000, well, $320,000 for commercial, and then there's a number of other areas totaling about $400,000. Uh, this chart is a summary of, of 2013 to 2019 in that regard, and investment over that period of time. And that translates into about $1.8 million in tax revenue. So it's, it's very significant. Um, and it's, it's obviously been a challenge for that sector because uh, the city of Moose Jaw's tax policy is to recover those monies from within that sector. So it makes it, it, makes it difficult to... Yeah. Um, over the last uh, several years, the city has taken a tax sharing approach to tax increases. Uh, that was an initi initiative introduced by council. And the rationale for that was to try to slowly and steadily decrease the tax gap between residential. In 2017, that was 2.25 times. Uh, in 2019, it's 2.19 times. So it, it has been a slow, uh, steady decrease. 
Um, and that uh, is uh, something the administration will ask council again this year to continue that tax sharing approach. Um, council again this year to continue that tax sharing approach. Um, we feel it is moving taxes uh, in the right direction in terms of that gap. So it would be an initiative that you'll see come forward in tax policy again to continue on with that. I wanted to go through some of the items of note uh, in terms of the revenues in the general operating budget. Uh, you'll note rents and concessions are revenues in the general operating budget. Uh, you'll note rents and concessions are down about $170,000, and that's due to a reduction in farmland rents and airport rents. Um, as part of our southeast industrial uh, development, uh, there are farmlands that we will no longer be able to rent. We will be selling them. Uh, so we're, we're seeing a reduction in the rent. We will be selling them. Uh, so we're, we're seeing a reduction in our farmland rents uh, as well related to the airport authority. Uh, we've now given them uh, some of the farmland rental revenue that surrounds the airport. So again, that wouldn't be city revenue anymore. That is airport authority revenue. And in terms of the airport rents, that would be our hangar rentals. So that again, authority is part of their funding. Fines and penalties are down about $540,000, and that's due to our reduction in our automatic, automated speed enforcement revenues. So that's our photo radar. Uh, that has decreased. That is something we expected. Uh, the province sort of changed how that worked uh, going into this year. Uh, they, uh, they are paying a lot of the costs associated with that, but they're also retaining uh, revenues to do that. And at the same time as well, they're sharing some of those revenues with other municipalities. Parks and recreation revenues are up about $710,000. Uh, the biggest uh, factor in that is the inclusion of Viera Center, now a city facility. A factor in that is the inclusion of Viera Center, now a city facility. Uh, significant revenues there that are included in our revenue streams for Parks and Rec. And as well, the implementation of a recreational season pass program has been very successful and has had an impact on revenues as well. Um, wanted to talk about one of our signif very significant revenues, and that's provincial. Um, Wanted to talk about one of our signif very significant revenues, and that's provincial revenue sharing. Um, as you can see, we're expecting about a $650,000 increase in 2020, uh, which is putting us on an upward trend again. Uh, we sort of bottomed out with that in 2018. Uh, but a significant role in our overall revenues. So it's a, it's a partnership and sharing with the provincial government to provide us revenues to uh, to help uh, deliver some of our programs and services and certainly has uh, plays a major impact overall in our revenues and certainly in, in 2020. Uh, so $1,631. So going to our, our expenditures, uh, the city has a number of key service areas and you can see from that chart, um, you know, some of our major areas, general government, uh, fire department, uh, police services, other protection, uh, the fire department, some of our other areas where we have some si significant uh, provisions in the budget as well. One area I would highlight is the provisions uh, miscellaneous and debt. The largest portion of that is provisions uh, to other funds. So what we're doing there is appropriating tax dollars for other funds. Almost $4 million of our municipal tax levy uh, goes to either the waterworks, waterworks or the capital expenditure fund. So it's, it's a major contribution to those funds. Uh, expenditure items of note, again, it's a status quo budget. Uh, we're delivering uh, the same programs and services as we did last year. Uh, any new requests are to be a decision of City Council. That's why you see those. Uh, any new requests are to be a decision of City Council. That's why you see those items on your, your agenda. Those are new items, new requests for Council to entertain. And I wanted to talk a, a little bit some, about some of the specific areas where you'll see increases. So our general government area is up about $300,000, areas where you'll see increases. So our general government area is up about $300,000. Our city clerk solicitor area is up, up about $46,000. The bulk of that is actually just a shifting of expenditures between business units. Uh, previously, all of our memberships were in another business unit. They've now shifted to the city clerk solicitor area. So um, overall. <clears throat> information technology, uh, up about $109,000. That's additional equipment reserve contributions as well as software maintenance agreements. Uh, most of our software now is on a sort of maintenance agreement basis. Um, so what you end up doing is paying a fee every year to receive updates for the software, for the software support and that sort of thing. Plays a very significant role. Um, the fact those costs are up probably is, is not a surprise. Um, Almost everything we do now has some technology component to it. 
and our, our information technology department obviously has to provide those services and the support for them. <coughs> I know it wasn't obviously has to provide those services and the support for them. <coughs> I know it wasn't that many years ago uh, where the information technology department was, in, was within the Department of Financial Services and we had one employee. Um, we certainly grow into a much larger department to support that technology for the city, but some of those cost in increases are, are going to go to the city, but some of those cost in increases are, are going to go along with that. <clears throat> Human resources is up about $43,000. Uh, again, the majority of this is actually other departments transferring some of their training dollars to the Human Resources Department. Um, what we've done is, is try to centralize our overall training. Um, for a lot of it relate to our succession planning, uh, and it was felt as a city as a whole, it was much better managed in one central area. So although you're seeing an increase in their budget, you will see dec decreases in, in uh, uh, education in some of the other areas. <clears throat> Employer paid benefits are up about $49,000. Uh, that increase is primarily in the candidate of us are aware. There's a step process for increasing the overall contribution of employees and employers. Um, so that's a large portion of that, and there's also some increased pension costs for the city that are, are showing up in that account. Um, so uh, I guess the bottom line is it costs more each year to provide the same programs and services. The bottom line is it costs more each year to provide the same programs and services. So certainly as we go through a budget process, we do expect to see some increases in costs. Um, our most significant cost is salaries and benefits. Uh, this chart gives you an idea overall, it's about 58% of our budget, that's $90,000. So uh, you can see some of our areas like fire and police are very labor intensive, majority of their expenditures relate to that, some of our other areas not so much so. But overall salaries and benefits uh, really play a major, major factor in the overall uh, expenditures of the city of Moose Jaw. Um, so I just wanted to talk again about some of the expenditures you'll see as you go through the expenditure summary. Uh, areas where you will see increased costs are our fire service, about up about $737,000, and that's uh, primarily due to increased labor costs. That relates to the, the recent collective agreement settlement, increased labor costs. That relates to the, the recent collective agreement settlement that we had from 2015 through 2018. Those costs now show up in the fire service. Previously, we had provided for those in our provisions uh, area of the budget. So it's really a shifting again of the budget. <coughs> our police service uh, requests additional $390,000. Public works request, uh, something you probably noticed in the budget, is down significantly, about $870,000. Um, the reason it's down, there's a number of factors. First of all was the implementation of the design team that council recently approved. So those design team salaries are now charged, charged to our capital. Uh, as well, what we did is we allocated our engineering technologists to capital as well. <coughs> Previously, what we had done is charged those into our operating budget, and then we charged overhead on all of our capital projects. Um, we actually charged about $450,000 in overhead. So what we've done is eliminated that. About $450,000 in overhead. So what we've done is eliminated that. Uh, we want to move towards sort of away from overhead as a percentage allocation and go to direct costs because it's much more accurate, much more easy, easier uh, to apply and also for everyone to understand. So, so although it looks like a large shift, uh, there is some to understand. So, so although it looks like a large shift, uh, there is some offset to that. And then the other major one, <coughs> Uh, by far the majority of that public works decrease is in the elimination of automated, automated speed enforcement costs, about $550,000. And what that is, is we used to have to pay uh, all of the costs associated. We don't now. So again, we've taken that out of the budget. Uh, parks and recreation expenditures are up about $196,000. Uh, a lot of that relates to utility costs, uh, water costs, uh, uh, some of our power and, and energy costs. Uh, year, uh, year centers now appears in the city budget. Uh, you will see that on that summary page. Uh, for $714,000 is the budget expenditures. Uh, the good news on that, uh, in the revenue side, you'll see revenues of $648,000. So that's a recovery rate of over 90% for that facility. So that's a recovery rate of over 90% for that facility. Um, certainly in terms of our recreation facilities, that would be by far 
the highest recovery rate and uh, my understanding in the future is we may even be able to make it a little bit better than that. So, so that's a very positive facility for, for the city and the community and uh, certainly can, uh, can pay their way in terms of their overall costs, which is, is, is good. Uh, provisions, miscellaneous debt is up about $66,000. And again, some of the things in there are salary provisions. So all of the salary provisions for collective agreements that we have under negotiation, we would have an estimate in there. So you see it in that area. Also, what's important to note in that area is that 1% uh, allocation, allocation of municipal tax revenue to the capital funding for recreation and facilities that the city manager mentioned is also in there. So it overall is an increase. Uh, also part of the operating budget is the transit service. Uh, also part of the operating budget is the transit service. Uh, if, if you look at that chart, uh, of the overall summary of that department, there are a few trends occurring in there and we prepared a chart on this uh, next slide. Uh, as you can see overall our subsidies are approaching 1.5 million expenditures are going up. Uh, at the end of the day our subsidy is up about $245,000. So that's a subsidy increase from 65% of our expenditures to 73%. And our revenues are decreasing uh, in both of those. So. Uh, it probably highlights for all of us that that's an area and review in terms of, of how we can maybe reverse some of those trends in terms of our revenue decreases um, and also uh, continue to provide that service to the community. Uh, this is a chart we try to prepare every year as a comparison of expenditure growth to CPI. Of expenditure growth to CPI. And as you can see, for 2020, um, we're projecting CPI to be 2% and our overall expenditure uh, growth to be 3.25%. Uh, one of the things you have to remember, though, included in that 3.25% is that 295000 is in there. Uh, so that's an allocation to capital. If you were to strip that out of there, it actually would reduce it by about 0.6%. So the increase in expenditures just for the operating budget is about 2.25%. Six five percent. One of the things too uh, is we often compare. I guess the, we often compare. I guess the, the growth in expenditures we should have at the city uh, in terms of CPI, and it's not always the best measure of that. And one of the uh, uh, things some communities do, City of Edmonton is a good example. Uh, they actually go and produce a municipal CPI, um, and they go and produce a municipal CPI. Um, and I, I've done a little bit of research in terms of that. Their projection of municipal CPI for 2020 is actually about 3.15%. So our overall increase in expenditures is in line with that. Uh, and the reason that's higher than CPI is, is there's line with that. Uh, and the reason that's higher than CPI is, is there's factors that the city would face that, that aren't in that basket of goods that are in the CPI and, and vice versa. So. So overall, uh, I think we're in line with the uh, cost of living increases in terms of the, the costs uh, to provide those services. <clears throat> uh, I like uh, this chart is a little small, but uh, it gives you an overview of our general capital reserve. And uh, as you can see, in 2020, we uh, have a balanced uh, fund at the end of the day. It's about $388,000. Uh, that includes that $295,000 additional, additional uh, that we're recommending for parks and recreation. Funding is there, so if you were to approve those projects, we would still have a balance at the end of 2020. Uh, unfortunately, you can see in 2021, we do run into a significant deficit. Uh, that's really caused by a major project in our, in our transportation area, uh, where there's a major project in our, in our transportation area. Uh, where there's rehabilitation of one of our, our bridge structures. It's about a $7.6 million project. Uh, that's something obviously we're going to have to address in terms of funding. Uh, hope would be there's some federal provincial funding for that type of project uh, and we'll have to look at other, er, other ways that type of project uh, and we'll have to look at other, er, other ways of being able to fund that. But that's the major one that throws the overall capital expenditure reserve into a deficit. As you can see, if we didn't have that project in 2021, we'd probably actually be in a small surplus position as well. <clears throat> so uh, as you can see, in terms of the general capital budget, 
Uh, if you go back to 2015, you can see our expenditures were significantly lower. Um, the city had sort of taken the approach of uh, doing the expenditures that were necessary, but sort of not looking forward to the future in terms of what needed to be done. Uh, unfortunately, you can see in our transportation area, uh, a lot of additional dollars have been put into our streets and roads that certainly needed repair and, and fixing. So uh, one of the areas I would draw note to, and one of the reasons there is that additional 1% being proposed for parks and recreation, as you can see, pretty flat across that whole area. There hasn't been a significant increase. Pretty flat across that whole area. There hasn't been a significant increase. And... Uh, Really, it's, it's a lot like what we were doing before in terms of our, our streets and roads and, and some of our other areas is we were doing the sort of minimum expenditures to keep, keep it going and keep it running. Um, but reality is with our facility, time we're going to see those, those costs spike. Uh, no different than we are with distribution mains and those sorts of things. So we're trying to be proactive and identify the need to invest more money in those areas. Our general capital revenues, um, just wanted to, to touch on our major revenues that we have for our general capital budget. Uh, so our funds are about $15.5 million, uh, which is significant. So that is the 10% municipal surcharge that SAS Power uh, levies on all power consumed in Moose Jaw. Uh, one thing to know with that though, that is a significant decrease from what we used to receive. We used to receive also from SAS Power our grant from what we used to receive. We used to receive also from SAS Power a grant in lieu portion, which was about a third of that monies. Uh, and I went back to 2016, the last time we received that. 2016, uh, the allocation to the capital budget was actually $21.5 million. So that was part of those reductions in 2007. That deficit you saw, if we removed the, the major bridge uh, work out of that, we were in a deficit of, of 6 or $7 million at the end of that five-year capital plan, well, a lot of it is this SBC monies that we lost, that we still haven't, haven't been able to make up. Uh, federal provincial funding, there's a small portion, small portion in here, about $900,000 of ICIP monies that is going in. Obviously, we'd like to see more federal provincial funding flow into the general capital reserve. Uh, taxation revenue, there's about $5.6 million. Uh, in terms of our capital expenditure fund interest, there's about $12.5 million. That's up interest fund interest. There's about $12.5 million. That's up uh, from what it has been in the past. And uh, that's uh, based upon our expected returns in terms of our investment portfolio. So plays a significant contribution to that overall fund in terms of funding our, our various transportation and parks and recreational needs. Land sale proceeds, various transportation and parks and recreational needs. Land sale proceeds, there's about $6 million allocated to the general capital revenues. And parks dedication, just a small sliver of money, about $119,000. Our Sask Energy surcharge, if you recall, um, when that was uh, restored, I believe it was 2008, the decision to direct that to the General Capital Reserve. And again, that, that forms a significant contribution to our annual expenditures. So overall, our total estimated revenues are about $45.5 million. In terms of expenditures, uh, our transportation area by far, our parks and recreation area about 5.5, other services about 8.85, our protective services 362,000, and our storm sewers about 3.7. <clears throat> so overall expenditures are about $59 million. Uh, it's uncompleted works. Uh, the largest portion by far is for paved roadways. Uh, we have $18 million planned in expenditures over the five-year period. Uh, sidewalks, $2.8 million. Traffic control, three point five. Structure upgrades, as I mentioned, uh, the one major one we have in there. But overall, $15.2 million. $15.2 million. Uh, so there's, there's a number of very significant uh, contributions to our, our transporta transportation area. Uh, in terms of parks and recreation, uh, this one's really almost a kaleidoscope of, of colors. Um, lots and lots of projects, um, not that much funding. Uh, you can see lots and lots of projects, um, not that much funding. Uh, you can see parks and recreation is, is uh, really responsible for a whole host of areas. So it's all of our facilities, maintenance, uh, it's cemetery improvements, it's pathways, it's reforestation, it's energy management. Um, some special needs upgrades, it's energy management, um, some special needs upgrades, 
um, all of our facilities. Um, so overall, you can see there, there's a, a very large mandate there of, of projects and needs for funding. Uh, and we're trying to address uh, an almost over, overwhelming number of projects um, with a little bit of funding. Other services, um, this one to me always looks like a giant Pac-Man trying to eat the, the last two slices. Um, the good, the good uh, point with this is though the Pac-Man is getting smaller. Uh, the multiplex loan repayments are actually decreasing. At the end of uh, 2020, or, or I believe it's in September of 20, 2020, that actually the first portion of our, our loan, which was the uh, loan in respect to the fundraising portion that we had borrowed, will be repaid. So that is gone and, and out of the way. Uh, we just have the remaining loan that we did for the, uh, the rest of the multiplex project. Uh, as well, you'll see in there a, a new project is solar. Uh, as well, you'll see in there a, a new project is solar initiatives uh, for 1.225 million. We're actually going to receive a major portion of that in ICIP funding, about 73% of that. Uh, 800 and some thousand dollars we will receive in ICIP funding. And that's a project that has some very positive returns for the city in terms of uh, it will reduce our energy. Some, some, some positives to that one. Uh, so that's it for the general capital. I just wanted to talk a little bit about our equipment reserve budget. So we've had an equipment reserve for more than 60 years at the city. And the purpose of the equipment reserve is to provide a vehicle to ensure that we have funds and a vehicle to ensure that we have funds in place when it's time to replace a piece of equipment. Uh, the benefits of the equipment reserve, uh, the biggest one by far is the ability to save for future purchases and to earn investment income. By doing that, the overall contribution is less than if you had not saved for it. Also, if you had not saved for less than if you had not saved for it. Also, if you had not saved for that uh, equipment replacement, you would in all likelihood have to borrow the money. Your costs go up significantly then. It's not a case of earning interest on funds that you set aside. Now it's a case of having to pay interest to someone for funds you don't have. Dedicate of having to pay interest to someone for funds you don't have. Dedicates uh, funding to equipment so we aren't into, into a competition in terms of our capital works program. What you find with most communities is equipment doesn't fare very well when it comes to capital works, when it comes to fixing your water mains or buying a new garbage truck. Um, so by having a dedicated reserve, uh, it certainly makes us able to replace our equipment, have up-to-date equipment, and by having up-to-date equipment, we can perform our program and service at the level that it needs to be performed at. <clears throat> That's an overall summary of the equipment reserve. Uh, you can see the overall $5 million. That is a, a significant ask. Uh, largest reason for that is the engineering area is about 2.5 million of that. Council will recall that's really the first uh, major request for equipment replacement in engineering since 2017. So we're doing a, a bit of catch up in 2020. Uh, and then you'll draw your attention to is we're, we will be using about $775,000 of control account money. So that's uh, excess depreciation we've accumulated on equipment. Uh, that we accumulate in our control account and we have it for new purchases of new equipment or where we have shortfalls so, so we're able to utilize some of those monies we've set up. I'd also like to move on now to the utility operating budget. First slide is just an overview of our waterworks uh, area. Uh, you can see overall it's a almost $12 million uh, utility in terms of revenue and expenditures. Um, unfortunately, we do have some significant we do have some significant cost pressures. Uh, we're seeing a number of areas where the, the costs are going up. And uh, as a result, we're requesting uh, council to consider a six percent rate increase, uh, as well as the implementation of the infrastructure levy. <clears throat> so some of those costs we're seeing seen going up. <clears throat> so some of those costs we're seeing seen going up significantly are production costs. Uh, our major component of that cost is the cost of water from the Buffalo Pound water treatment plant. Um, Buffalo Pound, as you're aware, uh, is facing significant capital upgrades as well in the near future. And what they're doing is stepping their rates up to be able to fund for all. Uh, you can see those are not insignificant increases. In 2016, our production costs were about $2 million. Um, by 2023, we're projecting they're going to be in the, about the $4.2 million range. So significant increase. Uh, also, distribution costs have gone up, gone up very. Distribution costs have gone up, gone up very significantly as well. 
2016, they were about $3 million, uh, and they've risen now to the point where they're actually about $4.5 million in 2020. Biggest component of those distribution costs are water main repair costs. Uh, this is a chart from 2010. It's our water main repair costs. Uh, this is a chart from 2010 till 2019 of our water main uh, repair costs. As you can see, in 2010, we were sort of merrily going along. It was about $400,000 a year. In 2014, we had a very major spike in terms of our overall costs. Uh, for very major spike in terms of our overall costs. Uh, for water main repairs, um, and that really got us focused on a cast iron water main replacement program. Uh, unfortunately, we're still in the early stages of that, so we're continuing to see that trend go upwards in terms of our costs. Uh, that's an area where we're hoping in the next couple of years we will significant benefit for the utility. Because the reality is right now, um, the reserve contributions, so that's in effect the operating profit that we make on that utility that we direct to our capital funding as you can see uh, has gone down and continues to go down significantly and that's because of, and that's because of all those increased costs especially in terms of distribution means However, right now I believe for 2020 or uh, 2019 uh, we're projecting just the water main repair cost to be about 2.2 million dollars um, so we're hoping that is going to reverse itself. Um, we're sure it will actually, and we'll have going to reverse itself. Um, we're sure it will actually, and we'll have additional contributions as we go forward. Uh, our, other, our next utility is Sanitary Sewer. Uh, you can see it's about $8.9 million utility. Um, bit of a different story in terms of it. Uh, its costs are much more stable in terms of uh, in $5 million, and we're able to contribute that to our capital needs of the utility. And actually, that utility is a self-sustaining utility in that the rates that we're uh, generating are able to fund the capital needs of that utility. Uh, for 2020, uh, we're requesting council to consider a 5% rate increase. Solid waste is our third utility at the city. Uh, it's about a $5 million uh, utility in terms of revenues and expenses. Uh, again, uh, a few years ago, council decided to make that a totally self-funded utility. So we charge landfill fees, we charge for garbage collection, we charge for recycling. For garbage collection, we charge for recycling. So that utility is generating all of the revenue it needs to be able to function and also pay for its capital needs. So it will be able to pay for the capital needs in terms of a landfill replacement from the revenues we're generating. Good news for that utility for 2020 is we don't foresee any need for rates. The last area I wanted to talk a little bit about was just the utility capital. And for the 2020 to 2024 budget, you can see by far the, the largest capital need is in our waterworks area, about $79 million in new spending. Our sanitary sewer area, about $29 million. And then our sewer area, about $29 million. And then our solid waste area has about 11.3 million, and that's for uh, the landfill. <clears throat> Overall, you add those together, over $119 million in proposed capital expenditures for our three utilities. Uh, just in a little detail on each one of those, the water, in a little detail on each one of those, the water utility reserve. So this is really a, a cash flow uh, overview of that utility. Uh, you can see the contributions we're generating each year. Uh, come from a variety of sources, and I'll, I'll talk about those in a little bit. Uh, we do foresee the need to borrow $15 million we need. And as you can see, there's still a significant amount of capital works that uh, are required to be done in that utility. So in terms of uh, our utility capital budgets, this is a chart very similar again to the other ones I've shown you this evening in terms of our capital expenditures. Uh, you can see into the other ones I've shown you this evening in terms of our capital expenditures. Uh, you can see again in 2015 our capital expenditures were minimal. Uh, they were more of a just uh, keep things running, keep things going sort of uh, mentality. Uh, once we got into the two th 2016 period, our, our capital expenditures have, two th 2016 period, our, our capital expenditures have gone up significantly. Uh, waterworks continue to be a high demand, uh, as you can see right through that 2016-2020 period. Um, some of the better news is in terms of the other utilities, sanitary sewer has very much leveled off uh, in terms of its needs, and once we look beyond, it's very much leveled off 
uh, in terms of its needs and once we look beyond 2020 they actually start to go down significantly so and solid waste uh, that orange bar you see in there is is the landfill replacement once that occurs um, we won't have another major uh, capital expenditure for that utility for some time um, I just wanted to touch on some of the major revenues of the utility so over the five-year period uh, utility revenues are going to generate about $23.5 million. Gas tax funding, we've directed about $10.5 million to the utility. Federal prevention for the programs that are, are underway. Uh, we are also hopeful that we will receive funding for the water reservoir pump house project that we have. That's a $16 million project. If we're successful in that, we'll receive about $11 million in, in federal provincial funding. So very significant. Um, that's accounted for in the overall budget. Municipal taxation for structure levy, about $8.4 million would also <coughs> impact the utility. Uh, one of the things we foresee uh, with the sanitary sewer utility, uh, once its debt is, is paid in 2023, there is likely the opportunity to amalgamate the waterworks and sanitary sewer utilities into one utility. Um, their waterworks and sanitary sewer utilities into one utility. Um, there appears there will be excess contribution available there that could be directed to waterworks, and, and we've denoted $3 million. So that's, that would be $3 million a year. That's actually just the first year of the, the plan would be in 2024. There would be those monies to allocate. The first year of the, the plan would be in 2024. There would be those monies to allocate. So it's an ability to merge those utilities and be able to, to have a larger funding source, essentially, to, to fund some of our issues. <clears throat> Proposed infrastructure levy. I just wanted to, to, sort of give, to sort of give a bit of a history in terms of this. So city administration is recommending a levy of $100 on the same basis as the hospital levy, and you've had a report uh, that is, is referred that we will deal with later on that. The levy is necessary to provide for a portion of the cast iron program funding. Uh, budget was $5.85 million. Municipal taxation was to make up a little over 1.5 million of that. The local improvement levy was a little over 1.6. The contribution from the utility itself, so the fees that it charges was 2.25 million. And utility savings were about 480,000. We're still million and utility savings were about 480,000. We're still waiting for the utility savings. Once we do uh, a few more years of replacements, we would expect to see that. So after the referendum on the local improvement levy, there's a shortfall of that 1.608 million because that local improvement levy, we've never identified a source of funding for that. Uh, it was going to be through a local improvement. That obviously disappeared. Uh, so that's still a funding need of that utility. Uh, council did, uh, I believe in 2018, uh, pass a motion that we would transition the hospital levy into uh, an exact purpose to replace that 1.608 million. Uh, this council has uh, further, wanted further information on that and you're considering how you're going to address that need for the utility. But uh, it is a shortfall in that program and overall it's a shortfall in funding for that utility. <clears throat> so in terms of our water works utility, so in terms of our water works utility, uh, what we're spending our money on, you can see by far the largest component of our expenditures is the cast iron program. In this five-year capital plan, there's almost $40 million dedicated to cast iron water main replacement. Both 2020 and 2021 have some significant uh, programs, $9.9 .9 million each. Uh, we are able to tap into our ICIP federal provincial funding uh, to raise that to that level. So there will be some very significant work done on that in the community. Um, also a major component uh, of the is debt. Uh, principal and interest repayments. Uh, we already have $30 million in debt for that utility. We're anticipating the need for another $15 million in this capital plan. So it, it starts to become a major portion of the overall costs. Uh, and you can see uh, the rest of the monies we're planning to spend as well. And you can see uh, the rest of the monies we're planning to spend as well. So our sanitary sewer utility, again, this is a cash flow model for this utility. Uh, difference from the water is all of these contributions are coming from the utility fees generated by the utility. And as you can see, they're sufficient to pay the $8 million. 
Um, one thing you will note there is over that period of time, we do go into a deficit position. That's where we, we utilize our, our other reserves to do just sort of short-term self-funding. Um, so we don't go out and, and borrow those monies or source those monies. We just utilize the utilities. That's what we do in terms of shorter terms. Borrowing needs is, is we don't go to market and borrow monies. We simply use our cash flows to be able to do that. <clears throat> so in terms of the sanitary sewer utility, um, this chart shows you what, uh, what the projected uh, expenditures are for. Uh, there's some major monies being spent on our Santa expenditures are for. Uh, there's some major monies being spent on our sanitary sewer mains in terms of improvements. Uh, there's uh, about $3.9 million for wastewater treatment plant. $11.4 million for lift stations, and uh, the wastewater loan repayments are about $5.3 million. As I mentioned in 2023, repayments are about $5.3 million. As I mentioned in 2023, those loan payments will be repaid and will no longer have that chunk of the, the pie overall. So our solid waste <laughs> utility, last utility we have. Um, again, you can see overall its cash flow. Uh, we're in a positive position now. At the end of the five-year period, we're in a slight deficit position. But the utility itself is generating um, from the charges it, it has and the, the revenue it generates sufficient funds to fund its capital needs. The $10 million for the landfill replacement, it will be able to fund that. There is some short of that utility, but overall it will be uh, positive in terms of the money that's spent. <coughs> and that's just a chart of, of the overall expenditures for that utility. So, in summary, the resulting budget requests for 2020 are our general operating budget request is just over $50 million. Our general operating budget request is just over $50 million. The general capital budget request for new spending for 2020 is $10.4 million. The equipment reserve budget request for new spending for 2020 is $3.85 million. Utility operating budget request $25.8 million. The utility capital budget request for 2020 is $32.5 million. So a total spending request in these preliminary budgets is $122,731,620. So what that means to our average homeowner, uh, a 1.02% municipal tax increase for operating, that's $1.24 a month. A 1% municipal tax increase is being proposed for the general capital budget for contribution to recreation and parks and facilities uh, capital needs is a dollar creation and parks and facilities uh, capital needs is a dollar 22 per month. A 6% waterworks utility rate increase is 364 a month. A 5% sanitary sewer utility rate increase is 245 a month, <coughs> and the infrastructure levy. Um, we're seeing dollars and 63 cents a month. Just sort of framing that in a, in a little bit different uh, manner in terms of the annual impact. So annually, that's $187.56 for the average homeowner. The average homeowner paid in water, $590 in sewer, $200 in solid waste fees, for a total of $2,995, that $187.56 is a 6.26% increase. If we remove the infrastructure levy out of that, it's actually a 3.44% increase for all of those. That is something that had been levied, but regardless, um, that gives you a perspective of, of what we're asking uh, the members of our community to, to fund in terms of our budgets. <coughs> so next steps in the budget process. Um, as administration, we would ask that you table this process. Um, as administration, we would ask that you table this communication. I, it has the finalizing motions for the budget in there, so if you would table those, and then we would lift that from the table at the end of the process. Uh, we would ask as well that you work your way through the new reports um, that are on the agenda this evening. Well, that you work your way through the new reports um, that are on the agenda this evening. Um, there are some reports that have just recently uh, been added to that agenda. We certainly wouldn't expect you to make any decisions on those, but you may want to have the, the people that are here this evening present those. It will at least give you the information on those, but uh, certainly those can be made on those. But uh, 
Certainly those can be made at a later point. And that's true of any of these reports. Uh, certainly council doesn't need to, to make a decision. If you're not comfortable at this point, you can certainly table any of them. <clears throat> uh, there's also a number of referred reports. So those are matters you've referred in terms of infrastructure levy, um, recycling. And then sort of once we get through that, we would see an opportunity for council to request any additional information or presentations. Um, one of the areas we would suggest that, that you probably have a little deeper look at would be the capital budget. And at the next meeting, we would be prepared to have our parks and engineering areas give you an overview, and engineering areas give you an overview of those. That's an area of the budget that does change fairly significantly from year to year, the projects we're doing and that sort of thing. So it probably, uh, if council feels there's value in that, that's something we certainly could provide you at the, the beginning of our next budget meeting. Um, some of our other budget areas in terms of operating budget, <coughs> um, some of our other budget areas in terms of operating budget, <coughs> we haven't uh, set out a time to go through a detailed presentation of each area. And the rationale for that is really what's presented in the budget document is a status quo budget. You've seen that four times already. Uh, certainly if you want to see it again, we can present it. But for the most, uh, certainly if you want to see it again, we can present it. But for the most part, anything that's new in the budget, you have a report before you. Uh, so obviously once we get near the end of the process, council as well can make any changes that you feel appropriate. Uh, certainly there'll be those opportunities there to do that. This report um, that I'm suggesting you table this evening, there's a number of finalizing motions in that and we would finalize the budget. Uh, we have three meeting times set aside this evening, December 4th and 11th. Uh, and we're hopeful that that will be enough time for council to make the decisions they need to make and to have a budget approved by the end of the year. End of the year. Uh, if we do have a budget approved by the end of the year, uh, it's a tremendous bonus to the city in terms of being to, to get ahead of our overall capital works programs, our operating programs, and deliver them starting January 1st, um, which is, is very positive. So that's the end of my presentation. I just wanted to... So that's the end of my presentation. I just wanted to take a moment to thank everybody involved in the budget process. And that ranges from council for the input that we've received uh, in terms of input from council to be able to prepare this budget. Certainly all of the directors uh, have worked very closely with the finance department to prepare the budget. I uh, have been to thank uh, the people in finance.